The term spinster derives from its use in the Middle Ages to describe women who spun wool to earn a wage and live independently from the male sex. By the time of the 19th century, the term spinster was used to describe two very different unmarried classes of women. Lower class women who were either widowed or could not find a suitable match were labeled spinsters while alternatively, middle to upper class spinsters were considered too callous, picky, and in most cases they chose not to marry. Despite the negative image the term spinster gave women during the late Victorian era, two spinster sisters, Clarabelle and Etta Cohn, rose beyond it to leave a legacy that lasts even today. Popular Victorian belief said that women belonged in a very particular sphere of society, the home and hearth. True women were those who grew up to take care of their husbands and children. Any woman who remained unmarried, whether by choice or consequence, was considered to be an abnormality. Spinsters were not only seen as unmarried women, they were believed to be unmarriageable and masculine. Popular culture of the time often depicted the spinster to be thin, with sharp and hard features like that expected of a man. Most women of the Victorian era were raised from the time they were born to be married. Clarabelle and Etta's childhood appeared to conform to this model. Born to German-Jewish immigrants Herman and Helen Cohn, the two sisters were raised in a middle-class family environment. Clarabelle, born on November 14, 1864, was the second girl of the Cone family. Etta, born six years later on November 30th, was the youngest sister. Their childhood and teenage years were spent in the family's home in Baltimore, Maryland. Nothing was particularly peculiar about the two sisters until they graduated from Western Female High School in Baltimore. Etta, being the youngest girl in the family, stayed home and took care of her aging parents and younger siblings. Clarabelle, however, was adamant about studying medicine. Even after an impromptu trip to Germany, perhaps to find Clarabelle a proper spouse, Herman could not dissuade his problem child. So in 1886, Clarabelle enrolled at the Women's Medical College of Baltimore and graduated valedictorian in 1890. Women who had received their medical degrees during this era normally placed MD after their name, but Clarabelle refused to do this and placed doctor in front of her signature. When Etta turned 22 in 1892, Gertrude and Leo Stein moved to Baltimore. Gertrude and Leo would have a profound effect on Etta's life. Following the death of their father Herman in 1897, Etta's older brother Moses Cohn gave her $300 to decorate the parlor of their family home in Baltimore. She went to an auction in New York and purchased her first five paintings by the American Impressionist Theodore Robinson. These were the first five paintings of the hundreds in the Cone collection that were to come. This was also Etta's first step towards a world outside that of her family and home in Baltimore. This purchase was Etta's way of personal rebellion and stepping out of her own comfort zone. The paintings represented her future and her small breakaway from the typical Victorian woman. After Herman died, Clarabelle and Etta began to receive an annual income of $2,400 from their brothers Moses and Caesar. This new source of income prompted Etta's first visit to Europe in May of 1901. In 1903, Clarabelle joined her sister in Europe. Gertrude and Leo Stein introduced the sisters to emerging artists from Paris, such as Pablo Picasso and Henry Matisse. This introduction was the start to what would become a lifelong relationship with the controversial world of modern art. While Clarabelle and Etta were touring Europe, living the lives of wealthy spinsters, their lower class counterparts were busy at work in their brother's mills. Women at the end of the 19th century were faced with an imbalance of genders. Over 600,000 men were killed during the American Civil War, and many women were left widowed or without the possibility of finding a spouse. Many of these widows were second wives who had no children themselves. These women were forced to return to a single life, and often many found their way to the cotton mills. There they often faced hardships beyond the usual lint head, for they also carried the negative term of spinster on their shoulders.
Clarabelle died in 1929, leaving Etta her collection. The only stipulation was that it remained together as one single collection. Etta died in August of 1949, leaving a committee at the Baltimore Museum to sort through the vast collection that would eventually become the Cone Collection. The collection contains 3,000 objects, including works by Matisse and Cezanne, among others. Today, the Cone Collection is one of the most renowned in the world. Even though they were spinsters and thus expected to live quiet and uneventful lives, Clarabelle and Etta Cohn thwarted this notion and through their legacy at the Baltimore Museum are remembered today as truly exceptional spinster sisters.